statement that LSU had been tracking for a while. Uh, really, when Bo Davis got here, it seems as if he had brought a, a list of players that he has been recruiting for for a minute and was going to be able to shift over to LSU. And Zion Williams was one of those guys. And Williams was the first to pop on July 4th. And then after that, it was a flurry of defensive linemen, which LSU is is in desperation for. A- after Williams, they got a commitment from Brandon Brown. And then Brown's uh, commitment led to Damian Shanklin, a top 100 edge rusher out of Indianapolis in which LSU uh, toppled Ohio State and Bama in that recruiting war. Uh, so very successful push over the holiday. We're going to catch up and get a uh, some insight on all of it from our friend Glenn West, who is dialing in now from 247. Glenn's got some really good work over at 247.com that you can read on uh, that, that is specifically about the recruiting wins for LSU football. And then, of course, uh, Matt McMahon's kind of had a sneaky Really good off-season in recruiting both high school and transfer portal. We'll talk to Glenn about that piece before we get out of here. Glenn, happy belated fourth. Good to see you, big fella. Hey, Jordy. I was just catching you there. We're yeah about a week away from media days, which is always a good uh, kind of you know, starting point for me in terms of the start of the regular season. So, yeah, media days this coming week, and a couple weeks from now we'll be starting up fall camp. And before you know it, but we're approaching that 50-day mark until – uh, game one in Las Vegas, so a uh, very exciting time, and things are about to start heating up here very soon. Glenn, you got any idea who they're going to take with them? Uh, I do not. I have, I have my suspicions. You yeah, know, I have my guesses, my predictions, but yeah, they haven't really revealed any of that stuff yet. It's usually about two or three players. So, um, who yeah, you I would got? Guess. Somebody. Yeah. What was that? Who you got? Who you guess? I, I would guess. Some- yeah, yeah, I would say maybe Garrett Nussmeyer would probably go. I would have uh, Greg Penn in there, uh, maybe uh, for the defensive side of the ball, and then uh, probably one of either Will Campbell or Emory Jones. That would be my guess. Pretty uh, safe. As the three players. Yeah, yeah I think pretty so. Safe, yeah, sure. I think so too. And I think LSU's got great representation. I, I think there's one debate, and, and and possibly I think if you want Harold Perkins to become the face of your defense, to become the voice of of you know one of these voices of LSU football, this would be a great spot. He's not, you know, I, I don't know. I, I've not been to a lot of the media gatherings that he's had, but I know that he's, he's a pretty quiet guy. Um, yeah, we've spoken. Yeah. We, we've spoken with Harold a couple of times and I must say, like we spoke to him back in the spring and he was much more comfortable with the media. So, um, you yeah, know, that, that certainly could be a, a, a position there where I think LSU might, might consider it. Um, I think it probably also, is going to be a little bit up to Harold and whether he wants to go or not. But uh, yeah, he'd be, he'd be somebody that I would definitely be interested in hearing from because you know, one of the biggest questions is maybe how he's developed over the off season at, at that inside linebacker spot. It's going to be so critical for LSU this season. All right, big G, as we said, LSU huge pull uh, during the holiday week started uh, with Zion Williams, Brandon Brown, and then Ken and, and then Damian Shanklin. Uh, what was the three halls for LSU football? Would the Tigers pick up? Yeah, they, they've loaded up here on this defensive line over the last really couple weeks because you can go back to even last week when they added LeJesse Harold, who we also have as a top 10 edge rusher in the country uh, on 24-7 sports. So, you know, they picked up two top 10 edge rushers in, in Harold and Shanklin. That's obviously a great building block uh, duo for, for uh, you know, Kevin Peoples to work with. You know, he came in and they've, He's made very fast work of bringing in two of the best uh, for the 2025 class. So, uh, you know, they're getting some speed. They're getting some size. They're getting some height. Uh, you know, a guy like Shanklin, who's been on campus, you know, a number of times here over the last you know couple months. You know, he was back here for the spring game. And I remember talking with him a little bit. And the, the whole experience kind of really just kind of, I think, threw him through a loop because he was – Maybe a little bit, you know, from from up north, he just didn't really have the the insight maybe of the program. But you know, Coach Peoples and Blake Baker, the defensive staff, Frank Wilson, all those guys really made a, a great impression on him back in the spring game. Got him back for an official visit, and were able to lock that recruitment down uh, here in the month of July. So yeah, he's 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 a really exciting young player. I watched a little bit of film on him. I think he's got some explosiveness that LSU's going to be able to tap into uh, really early in his career. Uh, and then you mentioned it there with Bo Davis, you know, pulling off the two uh, the two commits here in the last couple of days with Brandon Brown, who was a former Texas Texas commit and got 
you know, was on board with Bo Davis at Texas when he was at Texas. And uh, Bo Davis has brought Brandon Brown in a couple of times here over the last several months and uh, was able to flip that recruitment. And then you know, Zion Williams is somebody that even – before Bo Davis got here, you kind of thought that LSU might get in on. And when Bo Davis arrived, you know, he certainly uh, has, you know, kind of upticked that, uh, you know, the, the pressure of that recruitment. And, uh, you know, he was on campus for an official visit in June as well. And, you know, he's somebody that you know, we don't really hold, know a whole ton about. He doesn't speak a lot with the media uh, in terms of like just kind of uh, interviews and, and sessions of that in that nature. But, very, you know, explosive, you know, interior lineman who I think is going to be able to help uh, LSU in a, in a lot of ways. I mean, you've got to build up this defensive tackle room uh, mm -hmm. pronto, and they, they are they are certainly doing that here with those four guys. Uh, and, and certainly, uh, you look at the defensive tackle spot. I think that's that's one where LSU will continue to explore every avenue as they kind of go forward here. Other piece of recruiting news while we were away is that DK Moore commits to Oregon. Uh, not great news for LSU, but of the scenarios that existed of him committing elsewhere, I think this is this is the better of the two. Uh, do you think this sticks? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, look, I, I think you know DeCorian has showed us here over the last six seven months that he will be willing to listen to everybody until he's able to sign that you know the dotted lines there uh, in December. Um, you know, I, you, you mentioned that Oregon was probably the best spot for him. I think we had kind of been thinking he was not going to be choosing LSU this go around for quite a while, uh, and, and Texas was obviously a really big, uh, you know, impact player in his recruitment the entire way. Um, but Texas is also really locked in on Kalik Lockett and Jamie French, who are two uh, Texas wide receivers who were, uh, you know, very much in the picture for LSU as well. And you know, I think the fact that DeCorian committed to Oregon maybe kind of. You know, shifts the focus for Texas to to lock it in French. I think they feel like they can land both of those guys, and LSU will certainly continue to push for both of them as well. But um, you know, I think if DeCorian had committed to Texas, then maybe there would have been a spot there where you know I don't know that all three would have committed to Texas. That would have been a, a major overhaul uh, and, and really impressive signing class for Texas. So um, you know, I think there's. There's there's some positives of him committing to Oregon, but also I think you know the fact that you know Texas now has a couple open spots with the a couple of the five stars that they're recruiting. Uh, LSU is going to be in a dogfight for both of those guys here as we uh, kind of move forward in both of their recruitments. How about LSU's recruiting board at wide receiver, Glenn? I know you explained just a, a little bit of it there, um, but but anybody else that they they may be targeting here, anybody else that they've seen at these camps that they've had over the last couple of weeks that have, have made a push for LSU at that spot? Yeah, so, you know, the one that we kind of keep hearing, you know, obviously Lockett and, and French are the two big guns they've been going after. Uh, you know, they were in on Cortez Mills, who's recently, uh, you know, committed elsewhere. Um, you know, they, they've also brought in Derek Meadows, who's a big five-star receiver out of Las Vegas, who I think, you know, is going to be deciding here in the next couple of weeks. You know, he's somebody to certainly keep an eye on. Because uh, I don't think you know he's you know made his mind up quite yet. I think there's still some wiggle room there uh, to maybe get in on that recruitment and see if you can't uh, get somebody to go along with Bryce Underwood. But you know they've they've also you know they they dished out some offers to some you know local talent here. Uh, you know Frizzell Shepard is one uh, who they haven't quite offered yet. They, he was you know, they were a little bit late on him, and uh, I think you know Mississippi State was 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 a team that had been recruiting him for a long time, and he he committed there. Um, you know, the, Philip Wright is another one uh, that LSU has been on. A local kid uh, sounds like he's going to Michigan. So uh, there's there's a couple of avenues here for LSU to kind of get in on some recruitments. But uh, you know, right now it's really Ter you know, Teron Francis is the the lone commit at the receiver position. But you know, we we've got six seven months here until things get settled uh, in in the recruitment process. So you know, Cortez Hankins going to be out there, and if there's you know, one position where I think you look at the history of LSU and you're not overly concerned about it, it's it's wide receiver. They always seem to find a couple mm -hmm. of hidden gems uh, somewhere, and you know they'll keep chugging away at some of these big players as well. And, and, and it wouldn't surprise me if you know we get to December and you know one of these guys starts to have a change of heart and LSU is able to uh, you know get get them on board. Uh, Brad Davis did it again uh, since the last time we talked. He went into Arkansas this time. And grab the state's best offensive lineman out of out of that that area. Um, what do you see when you see this offensive line room going in into the next couple of years? 
it's it's the ideal way LSU wants to recruit all their positions. I think you know if you take a blueprint of how LSU wants to recruit, you you just take a look at what Brad Davis is doing on the offensive line. I mean, it's every class he's bringing in, you know, four and five star guys, and you know, multiple of them. You know, this this year, this you know, the guy you're alluding to here was Carius Kern. You know, he's you know a very highly regarded interior de- offensive lineman, uh, one of the best in the country. Um, and he, he he joins a group that includes Devin Harper, includes you know Tyler Miller, includes uh, Brett Bordelon. So they've got you know four really good pieces right now, and they're still going after some guys too. I mean, like they they absolutely understand that this is an offensive line that could very well uh, see four draft picks at this time next year be off to the NFL. So uh, they've got to re- replenish that that group. You know, it's going to be a very uh, interesting, intriguing offseason for that position group next. You know, next off season, um, and they have a, a, a just a ton of you know weapons at their disposal. You when you talk about some of the players they brought in for the twenty twenty four class, uh, even back to the twenty twenty three class, where you can you know, really kind of look at DJ Chester, who's somebody that's you know on the rise and, and somebody that I think LSU is really excited about his future. So you know, there's there's a bunch of guys in here that I think LSU is uh, you know going to continue to explore. But certainly getting those four on board uh, you know, for the 2025 class, there's not a position group on the roster that's better set up for the future, in my opinion, than offensive line. How about cornerback, G? They got some big commitments coming up. DJ Pickett, five-star out of Florida, is set to announce on July 17th. Jabari Antoine, a one-time commitment who decommitted, seems like he's going to make something public here over the next couple of weeks. Where does LSU stand with those two guys, and if there are any other guys on the board that they're making pushes for? Yeah, they're still chugging away. Uh, Corey Raymond's still chugging away at both of those guys, like you mentioned. And I, I think, you know, Antoine's somebody who decommitted. And, you know, I think there's been a growing sense, you know, or, you know, just around the, the, the media services that cover recruiting that, you know, LSU is still very much in play here and that he's, you know, somebody that could very well wind up back in this class. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, they, they, they've got to turn up the heat on him a little bit. And, uh, but, you know, he's certainly also considering Miami. Uh, you know, Pickett is somebody that's considering probably Oregon and Miami and LSU. You know, he released a top three, I believe, over the weekend. So he's down to those three schools. Uh, you hear uh, Oregon a lot for him. I mean, he Oregon's just been on a really big heater lately, and I think they they're kind of trying to uh, you know lock up a good portion of their class here uh, during the summer months. So wouldn't be surprised if you know Oregon's the pick there, but you know LSU will keep chugging away at that one as well. Um, you know, a couple of local guys that you know LSU's recently offered that wouldn't be surprised you know go their way. Uh, Jace Thomas commits here on July the 13th at the end of the week. He's somebody that was camped out, uh, camped a number of times in June. Uh, you know, earned an LSU offer, and yeah, I would imagine you know LSU is a very much a, a big factor in, in his recruitment going forward. And then uh, Aiden Anding is another guy, another cornerback uh, who I think LSU uh, just recently offered, and a uh, very explosive athlete. He hasn't been playing football all that long. He's actually a, a you know. A, a dual sport athlete he plays a little basketball he plays you know a little bit of track and field as well and so i think you know he's somebody that's a really you know explosive athlete he's tall he's long uh and somebody that i think lsu would, would really love to be a part of this class as well so you know a couple of local guys there that i think we're keeping an eye on but um you know certainly antoine and pickett are going to be guys that lsu is going to be recruiting well into december uh, one more local guy that, that has made some news here lately off of the camp circuit is Lamar Brown at, at university. Uh, a, a non-committed player at this point, but a very high-end player when you're talking about the 2026 cycle. Uh, where do things stand with him as far as his recruitment goes? Yeah, I think he's supposed to be releasing a, a you know a top schools or some kind of uh, reveal today um, of, of both programs maybe that he's really honing in on uh, going forward. I would absolutely expect LSU to be in that uh, that on that list. I mean, he's been on campus probably more than any recruit uh, that I've ever you know covered here in the last five or six years. And you know, he of course he goes to school on campus, but you know, he also makes his way over to the football ops facility quite a bit. He's been you know to Tiger Stadium. I mean, he was at every single home game last year uh, at Tiger Stadium. So uh, you know, I think LSU is very much you know. That, that, that's going to be one LSU's going to have to work hard at to lose. You know, I think he's going to be somebody that absolutely can be a staple, you know, pinnacle part of that 2026 class. Um, I think, you know, what you're seeing here recently is uh, LSU recruiting him as a defensive lineman. I think that's 
kind of where he sees himself in the future. And uh, I think LSU certainly needs defensive tackles. They need defensive linemen. So they're, uh, they're going, you know, full force and trying to get him on board with, uh, with, with the class as well. But uh, certainly somebody that I think LSU is, you know, very much in play for and uh, would, would be a little surprised if honestly he didn't wind up at LSU at some point. Uh, one more on 2026. Anything on Jakeem Stewart? Anything latest on him? I know that he's had a pretty eventful summer as well. Yeah, he's been making the rounds. I mean, he goes to USC a lot. You know, that's that's a school that's been certainly you know targeted by uh, by Stewart as as one that's going to be a major factor. He's been to LSU a couple times the last couple months, so you know LSU's still doing their due diligence there. I think they're going to have to really work hard to keep Stewart. You know, he's he's somebody that I think is very open to going out of state. He's made that very public over his. Uh, conversations with you know various recruiting services and certainly with us um so yeah look he's he's one of the you know five six best players in the country and 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 obviously there's going to be a lot of uh uh, a lot of interest there and and he's certainly taking advantage of a lot of those visits this summer this is obviously a really important summer for him it's important off season uh going into his junior year um so lsu will keep you know plugging away at that one but I don't get the sense that there's anything imminent in terms of you know a decision there. I think the only way that you would probably do that if is if he you know, decides to you know reclassify to 2025, which you know at this point he hasn't done, and I'm not sure he will do. So uh, we'll see uh, kind of what plays out there. But LSU will still uh, be a major major factor for Jakeem. Uh, great piece on LSU's basketball. Uh, LSU basketball's off season, uh, Glenn, and just what they've done kind of quietly underneath the radar. Matt McMahon has put together a really nice roster heading into year three. What'd you learn with your sit down with coach? Yeah. So I had a chance to, you know, kind of text with him and catch up a little bit and just wanted to reach out about the the freshmen in particular, Curtis Gibbons, Rob Miller, Victorious Miller. Uh, and then he also gave me, gave me a little uh, blurb on, uh, on Corey Chest as well, who's the redshirt freshman. Uh, really impressive group. I think, you know, they're about a month in right now to their uh, summer workouts. They've got about four or five weeks left uh, of really kind of on-court instruction and individual drill work, that kind of thing, uh, before they kind of shut it down for a little bit and, and uh, you know, kind of give the guys a couple weeks off. But, you know, they're, they're, they're very much in the mix, you know, I think in terms of, you know, when you look at, you know, NCAA tournament, you know, teams that are capable of getting there in the SEC. I think LSU has a roster that on paper can do it. Uh, you know, they, they obviously are in a very tough SEC. This is as, you know, uh, ridiculously hard of a conference in terms of basketball as I can remember, uh, you know, watching in terms of just the, the rosters and, you know, how much talent is out there in this conference this year. Um, but LSU, I think, has, has put their best, you know, their best roster together to this point, And that's a huge credit to Matt McMahon. Um, you know, I, I, I'm really excited to see Curtis Givens. I think this is a, a young guard that, that can really be an exciting young piece for, for LSU going forward. You know, he's somebody that's about six foot three, 190 pounds, but he just has a really good feel for the game. He's really, uh, you know, explosive and he can get to the rim and finish at the rim. And if you can recall from last year, LSU guards, they were able to get to the rim, but they weren't always the most efficient at finishing. And I think that's something that this guy, uh, Curtis Givens, will be able to help LSU do. Uh, you know, Robert Miller's got about a 7'3", seven, 7'4", seven, wingspan. Uh, he's somebody that I could see you know, protecting the rim and doing a really good job uh, of eating some of those big man center minutes that you're losing with Will Baker. So uh, I could see a, a bunch of these young guys playing you know, very early on in their careers uh, and, and, and making an impact for LSU. And we didn't even get into all the transfers that they added this year. So there's, you know, there's a bunch of talent on this roster. I'm, I'm as high on this roster as I have been in the last couple of years uh, under Coach McMahon. And I think that's a, that's a really good sign that, that LSU is going to be uh, right there in the thick of it. And if they, if they kind of get, um, you know, kind of get, get it together and, and get these guys, you know, developed and, and ready for the season. Glenn, great work as always. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the information. If you want more of it, remember online at two four seven Sports at Go two four seven. Glenn and his crew do a great job over there of covering LSU. We appreciate it, G. All right, thanks, Jordy. Thanks.